So welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're doing part three, the application of the JMS and how we're gonna do that on our mums. Uh, we have more than enough JMS here to, to do our mums. Uh, it can make almost 150 gallons of mix. And what we're gonna be looking at is probably using somewhere in the neighborhood of half of it um, for the mum row itself, maybe even a little less than that. And then what we'll do with the balance of it is, is we have some uh, landscape trees in uh, up in our front of our property that we'll add to and help them. We try to hit them once a month in the winter time. So what do we need to do to do the mums correctly? Well, the JMS is gonna be applied at a ratio of dilution of one part um, per 50 parts of water, okay? And that, um, means you'll be using for a three gallon mixing pail, which we have right here. Um, we'll put approximately, uh, roughly about 15 tablespoons in that, which will give us three gallons. Now, in addition to the JMS, one of the things you can do with JMS is it can be applied with other things. So it doesn't have to be just on its own. So uh, you may remember we did some videos on J making JDAM liquid fertilizer or JLF, got to get all these acronyms straight, but it basically a liquid fertilizer made from uh, decomposed grass in, an, in our uh, fertilizer bucket. It's been sitting there for, gee, since October. So we're in January now, so we got a good three months on it. It's really looking pretty good. And so we're going to use some of that uh, on the mums as well, because the mums are actually starting to grow. Then as a last addition, and this is something we'll cover in another video, um, but there is a solution that's made from rock mineral. You can use, either use rock dust or azomite or something of that kind of character. And what we're doing is we're mixing um, basically a liquid form of that into the fertilizer, the three gallon application. So we'll, make, we'll dilute that approximately one to 20 and that water combined with the fertilizer and the JMS will be what will be applied. So let me show you how we're gonna mix it. Okay, we've got uh, the material we're gonna use here kind of opened up. Now, folks may say, wow, are you applying this in a very difficult manner? I mean, shouldn't you like be using a fertigation system or something like that? And the answer is, well, yeah. If you're, uh, what we're doing is we're experimenting with this stuff and trying to find um, the optimum ratios of application as well as you know intervals between application. Right now, it seems to be that these ones are getting the best responses from plants, and an interval that we're applying this is approximately it's pretty close to every two weeks at this point. Um, when we scale this up and start using it on more things across the farm, we're going to move to a form of injector, probably like a Mazi uh, um, Venturi type injector system into our drip irrigation so that it goes into it that way, which is going to you know, really change the scale in terms of making the material as well as um, you know, where we're going to do it and you know, how to hook it up to the irrigation system and things of that nature. So those all are going to be future endeavors that we'll cover as we uh, go further on this journey. But right now we're kind of doing it the old fashioned way. We're going to do it by hand. It's slow. Um, and certainly, like I said, not something that we, you, would, you would even think about doing on any kind of production scale. It would not be a good use of your time. But what we're trying to get is a gauge again, is gauge the reaction of the plants. And we've already done it to these mums um, twice so far. And they are um, ahead of where they normally are in January. We've been a little warmer, but they seem to be responding pretty well. So first, how do we mix? Well, the first thing I'm gonna put into my bucket for my three gallons of uh, diluted solution is I've got a coffee can in which I have made marks in it that when I fill to a certain level and when applied to three gallons of solution, give a specific dilution. And so um, the rock uh, dust water, which is what we have here, we're gonna fill this up to 
the uh, 1 to 20 dilution line. Let's see if I get that right. There we go. And as you can see, the material is actually, it's a little cloudy, but it's mostly clear. It's just, what it has is very, very fine uh, rock dust uh, particulates suspended in the water. And the thing about this is the water is going to actually act as a transport to move this rock dust material down below the surface. So it's a lot different than just applying rock dust on your surface and then eventually um, you know the rains and stuff will, and critters will, will eventually start to move it down. Um, and it's less disruptive to the soil than spreading rock dust on the soil and then coming through with a tiller and kind of working it in. So what we're doing is we're we're selecting for the finest particles of the rock dust, which have just as much minerals as the big particles. And we're basically using a water solution to deliver that down to the roots. Then the next thing we're gonna do is put in 15 tablespoons. This has got a roughly uh, seven tablespoons um, up to the fill mark and seven and a half, I'll go a little bit above it. And that'll give me approximately 15. So I'll just take two scoops of the JMS. Now one of the things that I kind of wanted to uh, note to people, now when we were in the greenhouse picking up the JMS and checking it for harvest, at that point when it was settled, it had absolutely no odor to it at all. I stuck my face near the surface of it, there was no smell. But once um, we pulled the material, um, the thermocouple and the heater out and pulled out the uh, inoculation sack, and then through the agitation of just driving it from the up, upper part of the property down here to the hoop house, um, it agitates the material. Uh, it's still kind of an opaque solution, but now it gives off a very slight fruity smell. And I have noticed that in just about every batch that has been successful, it, they all have that characteristic when you mix it up and you're getting ready to use it. And I think that's just uh, an indicator of, again, that you have a good, a good batch and it's finished and ready to go. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna add into it is two tablespoons of um, the grass fertilizer. Now, two tablespoons is about 30 mil, and what this is going to give me is a dilution that's um, it's a little over 1 to 300, but it's not that far off. And that's good for, that's just uh, a really nice diluted solution, and that will um, just help the plants a little bit during this time of the year. So, now we fill it with three gallons of water. Okay, so this is the, the dilution that's ready to go, and it, it's really pretty well diluted. And it has very slight fragrance. Um, it's not something you'd say, oh, I'd like to get a glass of that to drink on a cool a hot day, but uh, yeah. But it is something that will apply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this three gallons and if you'll notice in here on our mums, we have T-posts set up about eight every eight feet, and that's to hold our Hortnova netting when the mums start to grow. But it's a nice eight foot section. And what I've calculated is, is that this three gallons will actually spread uh, perfectly over uh, this eight by three foot type thing. So we're talking about 24, 25 square feet of material for three gallons of the dilution. Um, one of the things that is important when you're applying this, you got to remember this is this is a microbiologic solution, so it's got live microbiology in it. You don't want to apply it on a hot day, or if you do, you want to apply it near sunset, or you want to apply it on a, a day when it's overcast, like we're doing today, which is really easy in Western Oregon. Um, you want to make certain that the bed that you're applying it to. Has, has adequate moisture in it before you apply it because the objective of what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this biology and we want to get it into the soil and drive it down. So if the soil has already got a nice moisture level through, uh, it will actually, instead of you know being kind of repelled or running off or that, it's gonna soak in and go down into the plants by the root zone. 
So it's important if you come in and before you're gonna apply and you go, wow, this looks really pretty dry, run your irrigation for a while. Do an overhead spray, get the ground. So it's not sopping wet. That's not what you're looking for, but it's moist such that this will be a nice addition and it will just go down, you know, really easy down um, past the surface into the root zone. So that's very important to know. So let's put it on. I'm just gonna use this coffee can as kind of a scoop to kind of help me even it out. Well, Mrs. Producer reminded me that we would be nowhere without our coffee cans. And thank God we are addicted to coffee that we drink a lot of. Anyway, uh, just to kind of take a scoop of it and you can see the plants, it's not gonna matter if this stuff gets on the leaves, it's really diluted. And the objective is we just wanna get a nice spray of it right around the plants to the root zone. As you can see, I'm not, I'm not like trying to dump it all in one place. And you can see it's soaking into the ground relatively quickly. Now this is our, uh, it, I might have lost count, but I think this might be actually the third application that we've done since um, late November. And we're so far ahead this year because our temperatures have been so mild that um, things are actually growing uh, much more. Normally, this is what it would kind of look like for us in March. coming up all over the place. Little green shoots. So I guess we'll have a lot of um, extra time to make cuttings. Yeah, that could be a theory. I think so. This is all seeking your door back here. Right. That and um, mocha. Okay. That finishes the fertilization project. Okay, so that finishes up the application. And this is a kind of a process that we go, we're go we going through about once every two weeks at this point. And um, we're gonna keep documenting this because, you know, from the pictures, uh, maybe follow along in some of the posts on YouTube uh, as these things begin to uh, really break their dormancy and really begin to grow. And the last step that we're going to be doing on this mum bed too, to finish it off in the next couple of weeks, is uh, we're going to be applying uh, somewhere around a half inch or so of urban waste compost. And that will basically kind of like uh, give the ground a little extra protection because we do have some bare spots here uh, where the grass mulch from last summer is uh, kind of rotted away and it's kind of gone. And it, and we have some blank spots, it looks like, where we have some of the older varieties died out on us. And so we'll actually be doing some cuttings, as Denise suggested, um, come this spring and probably, what, about March, I guess, uh, start doing some cuttings on these guys. So what are the key tips in applying and using JMS? Um, number one, never put it on full strength. Uh, when you have plants, uh, particularly in a hoop house, um, you want to make certain that you keep the dilution level um, down to around one, 1 to 50, uh, between one, 1 to 50 and 1 to 100. Um, that's a very safe level because the idea is with this is, look, you don't want to shock your system. You want to kind of gently nudge your soil system to moving in a direction to greater diversity. Um, the JMS has a significant protozoa population to it, 
and it has um, all kinds of different bacterias, but not a lot of funguses. There are spores and stuff that maybe got knocked off when we put the inoculum in, but for the most part, there's real no fungus in there. It's mostly actinomycetes and other types of uh, yeasts or uh, single cell. Well, I guess a yeast is technically a fungus. It's a single cell fungus, but um, it's basically, it, it's, it's going to, if, if you put too much on at one time, change the environment around the roots. And, and you don't want to do that. What you want to do is gradually adjust things, gradually you know, enhance the biology that's existing or build on it. And that's kind of the key here. The last thing um, is that when you're using the JLF, and we covered this when we fertilized our overwintering dianthus, you don't want to use a high concentration of that material. Even though the pH of it is kind of okay, it's not really super acidic, it's a very strong fertilizer. And so we only want to use it in a dilution rate of at least 1 to 300, 1 to 250 is okay. But we try to shoot between somewhere between 1 to 250 and 1 to 400. And we seem to get the best results from that point. If you go too much, you can shock the plants again. So you kind of, it's always kind of an idea of, you know, keeping things in moderation. So thanks everybody for following along on these three parts. Um, I know the video, the first one is a little long, the second one is a little short, and this one was kind of eh in between. And so thanks for following along. And if you have any questions, um, please uh, feel free to put them in. And we're, we're going to do try to do better uh, going forward, getting as many answers as we can. But sometimes we can't get them all answered, but we surely will try. And like I said, we'll keep some posts going in the future about how this project is working out. And thanks for joining us today. As always, stay safe and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.